over the last week, a, uh, I'm a media guy, journalism major, and a something hit the web that completely encapsulates, I think, uh, a lot of the issues that were brought up in this panel and a lot of the pertinent problems that are kind of uh, encapsulating this whole issue. Um, over the past week, there was a popular video on YouTube that went viral um, of an 11-year-old girl um, initiating a uh, talk back a very crude, uh, racy retort to uh, quote unquote haters on YouTube. Uh, this sort of uh, video is very common on YouTube, uh, especially for younger generations. Uh, and in the middle of the video, her father comes on and lets loose a technologically illiterate uh, tirade against commenters on YouTube, people who have been sending her emails, um, people who have been hazing her and harassing her over the internet. Um, and the reaction to it was uh, that it was funny. It was, uh, it got millions and millions of views. It was on a lot of blogs that looked at the sort of thing and was like, oh, this is hilarious. Look at the father who doesn't actually know how the internet works, who talked about backtracking comments and like going to their houses and all these improbable, uh, impossible things that just uh, really epitomize the generational gap between himself and his daughter. And so that was reacted to with a kind of humorous, uh, laid back attitude. As the week progressed, her personal information was divulged. Uh, first her home, her house address, her personal email, her parents' email, her parents' jobs, her parents' jobs, contact numbers. Um, it kept on going until this entire family was eventually put under police surveillance. Um, the parents said that there were death threats. The police are saying otherwise. Um, but this ramped up to such an exponential level that the entire family was disrupted based upon uh, an activity that the daughter had uh, indulged in on YouTube and the father's response. And so I, I looked at that whole kind of arc uh, that happened over the last week. And with it, you have every single problem that uh, is kind of leading to and a result of this whole cyberbullying uh, environment. You have a daughter who doesn't necessarily have the same laws of decorum on the internet as you would. Um, her previous videos were laced with profanity, uh, laced with just a uh, content that you would not, she was 11 years old, the sort of content that you wouldn't even expect from a college kid, uh, stuff that was graphic and explicit. Um, and so you have that issue of children assuming a more graphic identity online because they don't necessarily have the same rules of etiquette applying to their online identities as they do to their uh, kind of real world identities. Then after that, you have the parental response, which was too late which was uninformed, uh, and which only served to heighten the problem that was there. Then you have the media's response, which was not to see a situation in which a father was responding and finding out that his daughter was being hazed online in the way that any parent would if they didn't understand how to fight, that they would kind of lash out and try and protect their daughter at all costs. Um, the media made fun of him. Blogs just put it up there and said, oh, this is hilarious. Just look at this foolish father. The YouTube comments kept on going. The hits went over a million. Um, and then eventually you have the serious consequences pile in. And then after it's too late, you finally have the culture realizing that there are serious implications to this sort of thing. That when people are posting these ridiculous YouTube videos, when there are minors involved, that there are serious consequences. This girl's name is going to be on the internet. Her information is on the internet. This sort of thing is permanent. On the internet, it's not like when you're at high school and you have the, you know, the silly nickname. People attach that to you and then you go to college, it's gone. You go to the workforce, it's gone. When this girl is looked up on the internet for a job interview, five, six, seven, ten years from now, twenty years from now, that is what's going to be attached to her. It's, it, there needs to be a sort of uh, societal awareness, I think, about this sort of thing. And I commend uh, all the groups involved and all the, uh, all the work that's being done in trying to bring this to light. Um, and it's nothing that can come from the top down. And it's nothing that's gonna come instantaneously. And I, I don't think it's even something that's gonna come uh, from schools necessarily, uh, just only from schools, because they're stretched so thin as it is. Uh, they can only do so much. I think it has to be a sort of all-encompassing approach. 
and society in general has to it, that first gut instinct when looking at that video can't be this is hilarious look at how foolish his father is it has to be we can't condone this sort of activity you know we have to make sure that our children aren't posting the sort of videos that would bring out that response. We have to make sure that our children aren't th the ones who react to that video with very derogatory comments. And we have to make sure that um, as parents, as friends, as community members, uh, we keep a watch and we inform um, every w all of the minors uh, just about the permanence, about the implications, and about uh, just to be aware of everything that they post online.